my name is Steve, and welcome to Christianity Out Loud. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for tuning in, uh, wherever that may be, be it on Locals, Rumble, YouTube, or any of the other social media uh, platforms that I'm on. Uh, all of those will be mentioned below, so feel free, jump on, and follow along on this uh, journey that we're going on here. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, trying to yeah, be a voice, uh, build a bit of culture, stand up to yeah, things that are overtly anti-Christian to subtly anti-Christian to completely and utterly ridiculous. Um, why don't you uh, like, subscribe, all of that fun stuff. Uh, that way you'll always get a notification that uh, a new video is up. I've said it before, trying for weekly. And so far, not too bad this year. Hitting them reasonably regularly, which is good. So, anyway. On to this week's weekly word. And I mentioned, or I wrote rather in the um, previews, in the posts leading up to this uh, recording, that uh, time to reclaim language. Pretty loaded uh, topic, really, if we think about it. Um, and it was an incident. I don't think it was this weekend, just gone. I think it was the previous weekend that, yeah, just made me go again. We've got to make some sort of a stand there. It wasn't actually the incident that really got to me. It was the subsequent reaction afterwards. You know, and it plays into the things that I've mentioned about the hijacking of language by you know, that particular side of society and culture and politics that just hijacked it and any of their interpretations are now the correct ones. So, headline. And again, all sources are linked down below, so you can go and read these for yourself. Headline reads... Warriors star banned for homophobic slur said to Cowboys player. Okay, that would be the North Queensland Warriors. Sorry, the New Zealand Warriors and the North Queensland Cowboys in the National Rugby League. Okay. So, Warriors star banned for homophobic slur. The first line. An NRL star has been hit with a lengthy ban following a judiciary hearing into an offensive slur that was caught by a microphone. Firstly, maybe remove the microphones from the field. Just saying. And maybe what stays on the field. What is said on the field, what happens on the field, should arguably stay on the field. That aside, note the subtle discrepancy between those two sentences. The headline reads homophobic. The article, the first sentence reads offensive. Okay. Now the word offensive by definition or by nature is subjective. For example, what, what offends me may not offend you. What offends you may not offend me or someone else. Okay? That's a subjective term. Any word ending in phobia or phobic refers to the irrational fear of something. These words have an objective meaning, should have an objective meaning. Okay? Someone who is arachnophobic has an irrational fear of spiders, although some would probably argue it is a perfectly 
rational fear of spiders, but I digress. Back to the story. Any body, therefore, by that definition, who is homophobic must therefore, same definition, have an irrational fear of someone who is gay. That's the way language works. Well, that's the way language should work. But 100 years ago, then that term can be correctly applied. People did fear them, regardless of the irrationality. That's why it's irrational, I suppose. So that answers that question. It was irrational. No real rhyme or reason for the fear. Okay. But today, an irrational fear. I'm not sure that there is anybody that has an irrational fear. So what happened to the word? What happened to that word? You know, I'm going to reference Jordan Peterson now. And why? Because I think he's one of the most intelligent and articulate and well thought um, individuals of the 21st century, at least. Okay. And his point, or one of his points, he makes several good points, in my opinion, he makes several good points. But one of the points he makes is that cultures and societies are coming apart because cultures are based on a common set of beliefs and the ability to communicate those beliefs. Right? And our ability to communicate is based on words. It's based on the meaning of and the use of words. Okay? Now these words must have authority. These words must have an objective meaning. Where do we get the authority and the objectivity of language? Well, it comes from the traditional authors great authors, we're talking Shakespeare, we're talking Milton, we're talking Dante, all right? And what underpins all of that, or the book that underpins all of that, right, is the Bible, or the texts that are included in the Bible, okay? From that springs forth an understanding and, and an authority of language that is then referred to and used by all of these authors, okay? Now, Peterson says that the Bible's role in forming our common truth is absolute and inarguable. I'll quote him now. He says, it's not that the Bible is true. It's that the Bible is the prerequisite for the manifestation of truth, which makes it far more than just true. It's a whole different kind of truth. And I think that's not just literally the case. In fact, I think it can't be otherwise. This is the only way to, say, to solve the problem of perception. Now that's quite a big quote <laughs> with yeah, some big words and topics and themes to try and understand there. But he's not saying necessarily that the Bible itself is true, but from the language in the Bible springs forth an understanding of the authority, the objectivity, the truthfulness of language and words. That's basically what he is saying there. But he said it far more intellectually and articulately than I did then. 
But as with many other words, which I'll get to soon, this idea of being homophobic, say, since we're on that topic, has been hijacked, really, by ideologists, activists, and now it means what they say it means. N not what it meant, not what it used to mean, not what it should mean by every other definition and standard. No, it means what someone else says it means. Why? Because they say so. That's why. So, Steve, get to the point. What was the word that this NRL player used that was so unconscionable that it resulted in a four-match suspension and a groveling, albeit formulaic and stock standard sort of apology when these sorts of incidences arrive, arrive, arise, rather. Now, I'm not sure I can actually say the word that he used because YouTube in particular has all sorts of alg algorithms that pick up on words and phrases that are and aren't allowed. And although this is not a terribly big um, podcast, yet I'd rather not be sanctioned fairly early on uh, by YouTube, if that's indeed what is likely to happen. So I will spell it for you. Okay, so in the heat of the match, in the heat of the moment, and in the midst of an argument between these players and the referee as to you know, whether a strong tackle had any illegality about it, the tackle did leave an opposing player on the ground for a period of time. This player turned and said to the other player, get up, you F A." G G O T. Okay, that's what he said. Get up, you. Now, that's the word he said. That's the word he used, which resulted in the headline and first line of the article I quoted earlier A homophobic, B offensive. Okay? The meaning of that word, the F word, I'll refer to it as, the meaning of that word, according to, mind you, the Oxford English Dictionary, and this link is also below, a bundle or bunch and related senses, a bundle of sticks, twigs or brushwood, tied together for use as fuel. So that's what the word actually means. Now, before you jump up and down, yes, there is a slang use, okay, originating out of the US, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. That's a statement of what they say, not a passing of judgment. The second half of the slang definition reads like this, again from the Oxford English Dictionary, again the link is below. Also more generally of any man, especially as a term of abuse or contempt, effeminate, in extended use, lacking power or vigour, weak, cowardly, ineffectual. Now, in either of those two definitions, the traditional one or the second dot point of the slang, how is that homophobic? 
He's essentially said, get up, you weakling. That's, that's according to the definition from the Oxford English Dictionary. He has turned to the opposing player and said, get up, you, implying weak. You're not tough. You just got a little bit hit by this tackle. There's nothing really to it. It was a good solid tackle. Nothing illegal. Get up and play the game. That's the manner in which he used it. How can I be sure? Because I've just justified it with definitions from a dictionary. That's how I can justify that. Bless my cat as he sneezes, if you heard that. But instead of standing up and saying, no, there was no slur, there was no intent, this is what he meant by it, Here's a dictionary that says, instead of that, the club he plays for, the NRL, so the National Rugby League, just folded like a good piece of origami and conceded that the definitions, as decided upon by the self-appointed arbiters of truth and language, that their definition is correct. And yes... Obviously, this word was used to imply that a certain group of people, what was used derogatorily in reference to a certain group of people. That's what they decided. Then the National Rugby League and the club he played for went, oh, yes, that must be it. I've just provided you with a definition that said he didn't. Where's the standing up and saying, no, no, you're wrong. That's not what that word means. This is what that word means. In the context of a physical game of sport, he was referring to this other player as weak. And here is my dictionary definition that says so. Was in no way a derogatory term towards any group of people other than the gentleman lying on the ground. And in the heat of the battle, in the heat of that particular moment, perhaps what's left on the field or set on the field should be left on the field. You know, I had a conversation oh, a while ago with a friend, not too long ago, a month, maybe six weeks ago, about, uh, incidentally, discussing the book. Go and buy it. That'd be great. Um, having a conversation about the book. He's talking about themes and concepts are in that. And I said to him, words, words matter. He looked at me and said, Steve, words don't matter. Actions matter. And I, and I went, yes. Yeah, I, I agree, 100% agree, that actions generally speak louder than words. I get all of that. I get, I get that feeling, that thinking, that understanding, I, I, and, and I, I agree. Okay? What I'm doing here, standing up for a Christian voice, I'm not just going to say Christians should have a voice, people who stand up for them. No. Me and my Metallica shirt are going to stand up for Christians, Christian voices, Christian ideology, Christian worldview. That's what I'm going to do. Doesn't matter if I'm the only one doing it, I'm going to do it. Doesn't matter if I get 100 million people watching this or I get one person watching it, I'm going to do it. Okay? But words matter. The authority that we give the words, the authority in which we use language matters. It must. Okay? But we, society, Christians, okay, people who are supposed to believe 
in an authoritative, truthful, objective use of language, we have conceded far too much ground. Think about it. Do you believe that vaccination should be a choice? COVID vaccination, take that, that's the topical one. Do you believe that COVID vaccination should be a choice? Yes, yes I do. No, you're anti-vax. It's a choice. You want it, go get it. No, you're anti-vax. Why? Because we've changed the definition of anti-vax. Anti-vax means you're anti mandate. You don't want the government forcing upon everybody? We're well, your anti-vax. Used to mean you are opposed to getting any sort of vaccination yourself. Not you are opposed to the government forcing it upon everybody. Anti-vax. Do you believe that uh, marriage should be between a man and a woman? If yes, well, you're homophobic. That's just because you're homophobic. What? The fact that I believe society best functions on the bedrock of a traditional marriage where there's a man and a woman involved in the raising of children. I believe that structure is inherent for society to be flourishing because I believe that I have an irrational fear of gay people it doesn't make any sense yes it does because I've decided you're homophobic do you think women should compete against women in sport yes well you're transphobic because I think a playing field should be level I think women should have the opportunity to attain success competing fairly with a fair and level playing field. I don't believe that, I don't know that Serena Williams should ever have to play Novak Djokovic in tennis because she'll never beat him, sorry, because I believe Serena Williams should play against Victoria Azarenka say where it's a level playing field because I believe that I have an irrational fear of transgender people that doesn't make any sense yes it does you're transphobic but it goes much deeper than that and this is the point we have conceded Christians you've conceded it it has gone once language has no objectivity once language has no authority well men are women women are men men can menstruate and give birth prayers when you know spoken in public buildings must be ended with a man and a woman belief in meritocracy and hard work is racist belief that women can be stay-at-home parents because they have the free choice to do as they wish including be stay-at-home parents should they decide that's best for them well that's just misogynistic and and and, and sexist and promoting the patriarchy see all that's on us we let the language go remember to remember the uh, 2016 us federal election remember all of that fun and games that even those of us from australia paid i would say varying degrees of interest too we need hillary clinton to be our first female president all Donald Trump needed to do was say, I identify as a woman. And they have no argument in return. Because that is exactly what they promote today. To show 
the lunacy of such laws. Yeah, Canadian, what would you say she is? Reporter, political commentator, journalist, etc. Lauren Southern, clearly a woman, clearly a woman, is legally a man in Canada. Went to the doctor, said, I identify as a man. I need a doctor's certificate so I can get a government identification that says I'm male. The doctor said, well, certainly signed it. She then went to get her government ID card. I'll rephrase. She went to get his government ID card and got three quarters of the way through. The person at the reception on the desk kept saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Lauren Southern has then gone, oh, by the way, here's the doctor's certificate. I'd like to be referred to as male. Change the tone. Oh, my apologies, sir. Now has a government issued identification in Canada where Lauren Southern is a man. I've linked that video below as well. It's from 2016, I think it is. Go watch it. It's fascinating. Very scary. At the same time. You know, where do we go? Where do we go? Words are powerful. But one group of people, one side of society, of culture, of politics, does not have a monopoly on deciding what they do and don't mean. And at some point, we need, collectively, Christians, we need to stand up and say, I believe marriage should be a man and woman. Your home effect? No. No. Not argue why they're inclusive and diverse. And not argue as to why they believe in all of this. Just no. No, you're wrong. But you've said phobic means I have a fear of. I'm not afraid of them. Oh, but your view. Phobic means fear of. And I'm not afraid. Proverbs 23, verse 23. 23, 23. Buy, as in B-U-Y, purchase. Buy truth. And do not sell it. By wisdom, instruction, and understanding. 